Okay, so yeah, I hope people will keep uh, joining. Uh, in any case, uh, I think we are ready to start. There's people joining uh, now, so in my case, they will be joining in the next minutes. Uh, so I will briefly present uh, Rafael. Rafael is one of the authors of the A. Blanc paper and also one of the members of the ZKBM team uh, here in, in PSE, in Private Scaling, Private Scaling Explorations team. Uh, and he's basically going to guide us through proof accumulation schemes, and in this case, A. Blanc in particular. Uh, the format of the talk will be the same as always. Uh, he will go through these slides. People is free to raise the hand and ask uh, any kind of questions that they that they have uh, during the during the explanation, and at the end we will have a round of Q and A for like more extensive uh, questions or things that are not clear and require examples, some whiteboarding or whatever is is required. So without any other things to add, uh, Rafael, the floor is yours. So please feel free to, to start. Hello. Uh, no, I am not muted. Uh, hi, everyone. I am as thanks a lot, Carlos, for the introduction. So, as Carlos said, I am Rafael Toledo, and I'm going to present uh, a plank, which is uh, some work that I've done before joining PSC last month. Uh, for I've worked on it for the past uh, two years, uh, implementing from scratch a plank system and trying uh, our luck on uh, aggregation. And so, this is our tech. I hope you enjoy this talk. Um, so, some context first. Uh, so this work was done at Nomadic Labs, which is the main contributor of the Tezos blockchain ecosystem. Uh, this work was done in a big team. So there's not only the co-authors, Miguel Ambrona, Mark Bernardo, and Anne Laurel Schmitz, but six more people uh, who worked on implementing uh, the system, benchmarking it, and uh, quite a few other things. Uh, and this work is an extension of Snackpack. So I have to acknowledge, and you will hear through all of this uh, presentation, uh, the work of Nicola Gaye, Marie Malo, and Ankani Tulesco. Um, a Planck was uh, built with the problem of blockchain scalability in mind. Uh, it is one of the biggest problem uh, in blockchains nowadays, and one of the most um, common solution or exciting solutions uh, are rollups. There are two kinds of rollups: there are zero knowledge rollups and optimistic rollups. Zero knowledge rollups are based on validity proof. Uh, these proofs are very complex to build, they take a very long time, but they prove that a new state is valid. So we have instant finality. On the other side, we have optimistic rollups, which are very cheap to generate, uh, very fast too, uh, but rely on proof of fraud. So once I send a transaction on an optimistic rollup, it can take up to uh, several weeks. Uh, for people to dispute this, trans uh, this transaction. Uh, here, we are interested only in ZK rollups, and I'm going to give you a small example uh, so that we all understand what's happening. So rollups are, can be understood as uh, side blockchains on a different layer. So on the left of, of the slides, you can see uh, the main chain, and on the right, you can see the layer two. You can see that Alice and Daisy both want to send a transaction to Bob. So at state F7, A69, we have Alice having 10 F, Bob 10, and Daisy 20. We're going to produce the proof that, uh, that the transaction state to the new state where Alice has 8 S, Bob 15, and Daisy 17 is valid. When this proof is computed, we can send the, co uh, the commitment of this new state on the main blockchain. So you can see here that Alice on main chain still has the same balance, but the rollup state has changed from F7, A69, B07, B4 to 4 bb 90 A768. Here, what we're really interested in is how to generate the proof. 
Why? Uh, it's because it's very expensive, as I said before, to generate proofs. And we might have thousands of transactions that we want to, va to validate at once. So our take on it was to work on proof aggregation. So, uh, so why this is still challenging and we can't just verify all the proof at once is because uh, we want to verify the proofs faster than verifying each transaction. Uh, so we have to compress the verification of all of these proofs together into one proof here. Uh, the product complexity is very big. Uh, generally, it is in n log n, where n is, an, uh, is um, the number of statements you want to prove or constraints. Uh, but newer schemes actually do it in o of n. There are several position, uh, solutions which exist, such as recursions, IVC, and PCD, and more recently for leading schemes. But generally, these uh, rely either on cycle of elliptic curves or non active operations. So, cycle of elliptic curves really restrain, restrict um, which curve we can use, and it is a bit problematic. Non active operations, so this is actually um, stimulate field operations of a bigger field on the field that we want to prove things is very costly. Uh, it costs uh, several order of magnitudes more than uh, what we have, which is why here uh, we decided not to work on recursion IVC or holding schemes, but proof aggregation. Uh, we followed the work of, of uh, Gaye Maler and Al Snackpack, but for Planck. So let's dive a bit into Snackpad first so that we can then talk about our work a uh, Snackpack is based on growth 16 proofs. So growth 16 proof is based on R1CS equations. So you can see that we have uh, our witness, the AI, and we have three type of variables, so UI, VI, WI, and we are just proving that the sum of AI UI times the sum of AI VI equals the sum of AI WI. It does not use a universal SRS. Uh, you can see that uh, we have powers of those. This has this x to the i uh, in the tuple, but we have some randomness alpha, beta, gamma, delta. But we also have this uh, tuple inside the tuple, uh, which depends on uh, the public inputs. You can see the UI, VI, and WI from 0 to L. These are the public inputs of a core 16 proof. The proofs are, however, very short. Uh, they consist of only three groups elements, A, B, and C. And the, and the proof verification is also uh, one of the best. We only have a free pairing, but one can be pre-computed beforehand. Uh, so growth 16 are among the best proof, and Snackpack is trying to uh, accumulate them. For that to do so, it's actually quite simple. We're going to to think about it more simply, what you can do is think of aggregating the proof verifications of several proofs, define new variables, and update this equation with these new variables, and verify the validity of the new variable. So what does it mean? Here we have the verification of one proof. We want to verify several proofs together. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a linear combination with some randomness of these proofs. So here you can see that we have the randomness R, which is uh, the power uh, here on the left and on the right. What's very important to, to notice is that the public inputs do vary. So we have the sum of the AI I in red. Um, to make this cheaper, we're going to actually declare new variables. So the left-hand side, we're going to call it ZAB. The so sum of the Cs, we're going to call it ZC. Uh, the alpha plus beta plus the big sum is going to be called gamma prime prox. And so the new equation that we're going to verify is ZAV equal gamma prime prox plus ZC times T. Of course, these are products of group elements. So uh, when uh, G1, G2 and here GT. This is not finished. Uh, we have new variables ZAB, ZC, gamma prod. We need to actually prove that these variables were honestly generated. So we're going to do this with an inner product argument, or IPA for short. And we're going to uh, use a new 
commitment scheme, which is a nomomorphic pair-based commitment. Uh, so the advantage of SACPAC is that it's based on Core 16, which is one of the fastest and cheapest uh, SNARK uh, systems that you can use. It is still used uh, nowadays in very specific applications. The proofs are very small, and the verification time is also very small, sublinear. So that's great. It does have limitations. Uh, it is not based on Core 16. It is not actually easy to uh, translate snapback on all the proof schemes and Core 16. And this is the subject of this uh, talk. Um, it needs two SRS uh, for the commitment scheme. So this has a cost. Uh, making SRS is quite complex. Uh, it's a whole machinery. And uh, people who work in the ZK space know that uh, it is have to, to create your own, so you, you'd rather have only one. And finally, and most importantly, the verification is actually linear because of the public inputs. So as I said before, in the equation, we have the term gamma pros, which is the sum of the public inputs. So this has to be recomputed on the by the verifier, and so the verification is actually linear. Uh, in the paper, it is said sublinear because the uh, pairing check is actually much more costly than this, and this can be done parallel. Um, but if possible, we'd rather uh, remove this cost because we might want to aggregate thousands or who knows, millions of proofs. Uh, so I hope everyone has good understanding of Core 16 and Snack Pack. Uh, feel free to ask questions now. Yes, I'm going to talk about Planck and uh, my work a Planck. Thank you. Uh, so Planck in brief, uh, Planck does not rely on our NCS equation. It relies on Planckish equations. So the equation is for vanilla Planck is QL times A plus QR times B plus Q times C plus QM times AB plus QC equals zero. You can think of Planck a bit like uh, logic systems, where the QL, QR, QO, QM, QC are just switches to activate uh, some gates. So QL times A, if I put QL equal one, it means that I am adding to my operation the addition of variable A. Uh, QM would be uh, adding the multiplication of A and B. QC would be adding a constant. Of course, uh, these variables Q uh, are called selectors. They might not be zero and one, they can be any scalars. The SRS of Planck is universal, it's just the powers of tau. So we could technically extract the powers of tau from uh, Core 16 and reuse them here. Uh, that's what a uh, few projects did, actually. The proofs are short ish. They are not three group elements, but much more, as you can see. So we have our three wires A, B, and C, which is where we are encoding our witness. We have uh, Z, kilo, mid, high, W, Z, W, Z, omega, that we can talk later on. And then we have scalars, evaluations, A, B, C, some S, and Z, sigma. Uh, the proof verification is still short. As you can see, we have only uh, two pairing uh, to do, and then equality. Uh, there is uh, a bit of magic uh, because this WZ, WZ omega needs to be computed. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into that later, perhaps. So this equation actually comes from uh, the batch KZG opening verification. Uh, there are also other checks which are done. In plant paper, it is... Uh, a bit hard to see uh, because they are doing all the they are completing all the checks at once, uh, but there are also checks to to make sure that the identities actually these constraints QL times A plus QR times P and so on uh, are valid. If you have worked on Plonk or Hello, you must have seen these kind of tables before. So these tables represent the circuits. We have our wires A, B, C, and we have our selectors QL, QR, QO, QM, QC. Uh, this uh, table is uh, categorized in wire uh, by a column, so the wires and the selectors, but also by rows. So rows corresponds to the constraints. On each, each of these constraints must be valid. And by that, we mean that 
One replacing QL1, QR1, and so on by its value. Replacing the wires by its value, we must, we must have the previous equation equal to zero for each of these rows. One thing that is very important here in the wires, you can see that I've written a capital X. It's because this is an indeterminate variable. This would be the witness that only the prover knows. What's really important, however, is that um, we have uh, indices on, this cap on these variables. And these indices are part of the circuits. They represent permutations. Uh, and we actually uh, name this permutation sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 uh, of these variables. When you have the circuits, you have quite a lot of constraints. So the first thing you want to do is to compress them to prove things on small objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to use polynomials. So uh, let's take, for example, QLX. Uh, QLX will evaluate to QL1 uh, on the point of a subgroup to QLN on, uh, another, on the last point of a subgroup. What we're going to do is we're going to then use KZG commitment scheme to commit on these polynomials. The prover, uh, the first thing he will do is he will replace the intermediate variables in the wires by the witness that he knows of. And likewise, in the setup, he will commit to these uh, polynomials. So we're going to have this A1, B1, C1 from the proof. When we have everything committed, so not only the wires and, and, uh, and the, select, uh, the wires and selectors, what we're going to do is we're going to sample the evaluation points and evaluate some of the polynomials, so A, B, C, and, uh, and a few of the permutations, to these evaluation points. As you can see in the proof, this corresponds to uh, A, B, C, S, sigma 1, and is supposed to be S, sigma 2. That's a typo, sorry. Uh, the WZ and WZ omega, I forgot to say, these are uh, elements from uh, KCG, so we're not going to talk about it. Know that we have uh, compressed objects to represent our wires and our selectors, so oh, the witness and our circuits. What do we have to do? We have to prove two things. We have to prove that the evaluations correspond to the commitments. This is already done with KCG. The second thing, and perhaps most important thing that we have to do, is prove that these evaluations actually satisfy the identity that we want to prove. Uh, so to do that, what we're going to prove is that uh, the identities are called F here. Uh, so, so the sum of the identities are equal to a multiple of a zero uh, are equal to a multiple of the zero multiple polynomial on a subgroup. Uh, this is not very important. The only thing which is important is that we're going to have to create a polynomial T. Before talking about the polynomial T, however, let's talk about uh, another polynomial, polynomial Z, which is proving that uh, the permutation was done correctly. As you can see, this polynomial is very, very big. It doesn't even fit on the slide, uh, but you, you can be sure that uh, it is correct. We're going to prove the permutation, and we're going to prove the other identity, which is QL times A plus QR times B, and so on. In theory, there could be other identities. Uh, we could prove range queries with uh, lookups, or we could uh, prove complex identity with a variant of uh, Planck called Turbo Planck. Uh, this works the same way, uh, and we will see that just now. Uh, as you remember just before, I said that we had to create a polynomial T. In this polynomial T, we're going to batch each of the identities that we want to check. So the first identity, as you can see, is A times B times QM plus A times QL. It's the equality that we talked for the past few slides. The other three members represent the permutation. You can see that we are batching because we are multiplying by 1 divided by ZH, or alpha divided by ZH, or alpha squared divided by ZH. The H being the polynomial that equals to 0 on all the elements of the group H that we're going to work on. This is not very important. If you want to add more identities, you're just going to add more identities in this polynomial with a different uh, batching coefficient, so A squared, A cube, and so on. This polynomial is quite big. Uh, it's uh, 
of degree 3M. So this is why we actually split in three polynomials, T low, T mid, T high, and we're going to commit to this in the proof. If the polynomial was of a size higher, we would split it in more than three times, but this is uh, the vanilla Planck paper. So Planck in brief is supposed to be quite simple. Uh, we're going to define a circuit, remember the first table, and we're going to commit to our selectors, QL, QM, QR. These are going to be our public parameters. The program is going to generate the wires with a witness, generate the permutation N polynomial Z and the quotient polynomial T, and it's going to commit on them. One thing which is very important is we're going to hash all of these polynomials together to get an evaluation point. Uh, this is not done in, uh, in Cross-16 uh, because the randomness is actually in the SIS. Uh, so this is very important for, for APLONG because unfortunately, um, we will have to generate an evaluation point and randomness for all of the proofs. And this is not ideal depending on the um, applications. Once we have this evaluation point, so we're going to evaluate our polynomials, the set of points, the wires, and the permutation and questions on this point and potentially uh, the point just after, depending on the evaluation. Finally, in the verification, we're going to check that the evaluations were computed correctly, correspond to the commitments, and we're going to check that the identities are correct. This is the scalar check that I've uh, written here. So now that we know a bit about Planck, how does a Planck works? It is quite simple. Uh, you nearly saw that slide before because it's exactly the same as Snackpack. We're going to aggregate the proof verification, declare new variables and update the verification equation, and verify the validity of these new variables. We are not going to use the same uh, polynomial scheme, however, we're going to use a multi polynomial scheme that we created, as well as uh, inner product arguments. There will be some optimization. Uh, so our opti commitment scheme actually has been optimized. We only need one SIS. The whole scheme needs two SIS in total, but only one SIS at a time. Uh, we proved in the paper that uh, we can share the permutation argument, so the permutation um, polynomial. We uh, also created the concept of a meta commitment, and we included in the statement a commitment. These two points are quite important together because it will enable us to do a sublinear verification. And by that, I mean that uh, the verification will not depend at all on the number of public inputs. So here we have a plan proof where we have our commitments on the selectors, wires, uh, quotient and permutation polynomial, the evaluations on the other side, and the hash. What we're going to do is we're going to take not one proof, but many. Uh, we want to aggregate them together, so we're going to match all of these together. So as you can see, I have many A's. I have KA's, KB's, KC's in the commitments and the evaluation. Uh, as I said uh, just before, and it's very important, we are hashing here all of these together. Uh, there could be another way, which would be uh, using MPC. Uh, to create uh, an evaluation point, or using a different uh, polynomial commitment scheme to have uh, uh, an efficient verification on several evaluation points. Uh, here we are uh, in the context of a validity rollout, where we have an operator which is supervising everything. Uh, so the supervisor can receive all of these uh, commitments creates an a unique evaluation point and send it to everyone. So this is a lot. So what can we do to make this big box a, a bit more sparse? Uh, so the first thing that we can note is that uh, the quotient polynomial was an aggregation of identities. So technically, we can actually aggregate all of the identities over all the proofs together. The second thing that we can do, and we prove it in the paper, is notice that we can actually uh, match all of the permutations together. 
Um, now, what we have left, which is linear and number of proof, is our wires A, B, and C. So what we're going to do is, in the same as Snapback, we're going to actually commit on these commitments. Uh, why can we do that? It's because KCG commitments are monomorphic. Uh, and so we can actually uh, patch them together with some randomness. Now that we batch uh, the A, B, and C in the commitments uh, in the group space, we have to add the corresponding checks in the evaluation space and for the verifier. So what we're going to do is in the verifier, we're going to add the fact that the commitment W was well computed. Ah, sorry, I just saw that there's a question. Just a quick note, settings back. Uh... Yeah, uh, so Snapback needed to have two SIs uh, for the commitment schemes to have uh, the binding property in the uh, commitment scheme. There is another paper which actually uh, decides did to use only one SI, if I remember well, but in G2 to only have odd powers of uh, odd powers. Uh, here we prove that we actually do not need uh, the binding property uh, for IPA. Uh, we can use the inner binding pro um, inner pairing binding properties, uh, which is slightly weaker. Uh, I think. I hope that this answers your, your question, your remark. Um, yeah, so we were uh, adding in the verification that the uh, commitment W was well computed. Uh, what we can note is that all of these uh, checks here are actually scalars. Open. So, instead of having all of these operations, which, as you can see, because of the sigma here, would be linear and number of proof, we can actually make a plant proof of this. So this is our meta verification. So what we're going to add in our proof is a proof of knowledge that all of the relations that I just showed, all of these, were correct. And now you can see that the number of commitments and the number of scalars evaluations um, is constant in the number of proofs. Uh, so I passed a few details, but one thing which is uh, quite interesting is because we hid everything, it's very interesting in uh, applications like Prolapse where uh, the output of the first uh, proof is input of the second one. So what we can do is we can hide all of these intermediary results and just show the beginning and the end. And like this, we only have two public inputs. Uh, this can uh, be done if I were to go a bit back, thanks to the commitments in the statement. So it's not only the meta verification, it's what we're doing is that we are going to hide all of the um, intermediary public inputs in an extra commitment and prove in our proof of knowledge that the commitment was correct. Uh, so the advantage sheet of a plank is that we have a rather efficient aggregation of plantish proofs, not on, and so it's not only in course 16. We have a sublinear verification and proof, and uh, we also provide the methods to involve committed data in the statement. There are some limitations. The randomness generation, for instance, here we're using a, a central supervisor, might not work for everyone, and MPC are expensive. What I didn't talk also is that we can prove different secrets. Uh, this is still very expensive, uh, and the work is not going to make it cheaper. Uh, this work was not only theoretical. We spent two years implementing it, uh, doing benchmark, and uh, we have a nice paper uh, about it. So we have some benchmark, and I'm going to present them to you now. The benchmark were done on an Amazon instance with the Intel and Platinum, one terabyte of RAM, 128 processors. Uh, we did some tests with uh, distributed machines. Uh, here, the benchmark was done only with one machine with many processors, each processor uh, creating its own uh, subproofs. Uh, so committing and evaluating the, the different wires. We had the secret with two to the 16 constraints in this benchmark. And 
uh, the circuit is a simple circuit with multiplication addition. Uh, this does not uh, this doesn't really matter uh, for the proving time or complexity. Uh, so the setup is very expensive, just because we have to create a new setup for the plant proof for the meta verification. The proving time is slightly uh, more expensive than doing all of the plant proofs in parallel, and that is because we have the meta verification proofs. The proof size is, as you can see, sublinear. Uh, this is uh, one of the very important uh, outcome. And the verification also is. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened in the last point, so forget about it. Uh, we can see that for about 300 proofs, we have a verification. Three, sorry, 300 proofs. Yeah, aggregating 300 proofs. The uh, verification time is faster with the plank than for uh, the aggregate for the verifications of many planks. Uh, yeah. So in conclusion, uh, I showed you proof of creations for Planck based on Snackpack. Uh, I briefly passed over the notions of uh, multi polynomial commitments and meta verification, as well as committed data in Planck statements. Uh, we have an implementation. Everything's open source, so have a look. And this is not uh, the only work that uh, we've been working on. So have a look uh, at the other work. We did quite a lot of work on uh, Plank optimization and uh, circuit optimization, which can be of interest. Thank you. Um, sorry, Carlos, if you spoke, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, your mic died. So if anyone has any question, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, so Nico La has a question. The public input is usually given by the verifier because it's kind of the root of trust, like a Merkle tree root, yes. So it's needed to make sure the prover prove something meaningful. If a plan hides public input by having a commitment, the refiner needs to trust there is a valid commitment to all public inputs of each individual proofs. For example, how does he know one used the only valid Merkle tree route? Yeah, uh, so that is correct. Uh, so in the case of prolapse, we are, uh, it is, so hiding public inputs in the, context of prolap is actually uh, solving your problem interestingly uh, because you are trying to because there's uh, only one uh, no I shouldn't say that uh, sorry let me find my words um, yeah so the first thing that I can tell you is that we are uh, Basing security on the binding property of the commitment schemes to have a unique uh, uh, opening of the commitments. And so we know that there is, with overwhelming probability, of course, uh, only uh, a unique set of uh, public inputs that would work. For uh, ZK rollup, this actually is even stronger because we have these state transitions. That used also uh, hash functions and other things, uh, which makes it impractical to cheat on the commitment of the public inputs. Uh, I can understand that uh, if you want to prove certain things on the public inputs, uh, hiding them in the commitments might actually be a bit tricky. What you could do is add in the meta verification circuit extra constraints on these public inputs. Uh, I hope this answered your question. Uh, Carlos has another questions. Uh, 
Why is one from next generation an issue? Yeah, yeah um, sorry. Uh, Nicolas, as you say, this is not a problem in the context of rollup, if you understand correctly. Yes. Uh, generally, it could be a problem, but we can add extra constraints in the meta verification uh, to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, Carlos has a question about a uh, random generation. Okay. Uh, and also in regards to ZMPC. Yes. Uh, so let's go back. So. Uh, in Plunk, to generate the evaluation points where we're going to uh, evaluate our polynomials, what we have to do is we have to take uh, all of our uh, wires, our setup, our permutation and question polynomial, and hash them uh, on the uh, to get the evaluation points. This can be quite problematic. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because we are hashing many things together. Uh, what you is it very important that you hash everything at at once, or that you hash uh, hashes of uh, subsets? Uh, because this is uh, where your security lays uh, in the random oracle model. Uh, there are two main ways to do that because you have to do this. This uh, hash comes from the plum paper. Either that's what we did, we hashed everything, which means that you have to compute all of these A, B, Cs at once and wait for them. You could do it in a, in a tree mode so that you parallelize a little differently. The other thing you could do is uh, each person creates a proof individually. So each person has its uh, QL, QR, QM, and so on, and will, and will uh, commit and create its own evaluation points on its own AI, BI, CI. What's going to happen afterwards is because we have K proofs, we are going to have K evaluation points. So we could use a different polynomial commitment scheme to, um, uh, to check the evaluations on all of these evaluation points. The last thing we could do is use a different method that's say uh, uh, hashing or oh, specific hashing, sorry, uh, to generate this, evalu this evaluation point with MPC. So instead of having a centralized supervisor, you would have one prover for each of these proofs. Sorry, uh, it's a col by column of proofs. Once everyone has uh, computed its A, B, and C, they are going to compute with MPC one unique uh, evaluation. Uh, so how it could be done, for instance, uh, you could use couple secrets, or you could use uh, quite a few different things. Uh, yeah. Uh, we didn't really look too much into it. Uh, so I'm sorry, but I won't be able to elaborate um, more on TMPC. Uh, can we use the techniques of Aplonk for custom gates or lookup arguments? Yes. Uh, so we have implemented uh, Aplonk uh, with uh, quite a few different uh, custom gates. Uh, so it is uh, definitely possible. The only thing that changes when using custom gates uh, will technically be this polynomial T. So as long as these custom gates are being reused in the same secret, you can use Aplonk a very easily. If you have different secrets, uh, you will have to use a more complex version of Aplonk that we also have, uh, which um, which supports uh, several secrets. Uh, this is a bit more complex because what you have to do is basically uh, you will uh, have a proof. When creating the, the proof, you will uh, have different secrets, and you will have to say that this set of uh, commitments and, and uh, evaluations are wired to these secrets. And so you have to say uh, in the proof and in the verifier, uh, give information to say to which secret is associated with proof. And that is not very flexible, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, uh, you, you can uh, use custom gates and lookup arguments uh, in a clock. Uh, we can talk later on, uh, on 
on several examples if you want to. Uh, continuous lattice space hash functions are similar uh, without giving up too much security. In that way, you could parallelize the hashing quite a lot. So you would have to do trees or similar, or the hashing to be serial in the case for from the security standpoint. Uh, okay, so the example you gave was basically uh, hashing uh, several things together and using a homomorphic uh, hash functions to actually only have one evaluation point. Uh, I think that could be possible. Uh, as long as the output of your, that you have a safe method to convert the output of your hash into a scalar of the group, that should be fine. Um, I'm just thinking, you just have to make sure that your hash function is uh, has the right properties. Um, yeah, I do not. Yeah, so the problem is you have to generate randomness for all of this. Uh, so uh, in the paper, it is done by hashing, and normally you would do it by hashing all of the commitments together. Uh, what you're saying uh, does make sense. Uh, what you're saying, uh, what I was saying during this presentation is we're going to hash everything. What you're saying is everyone is going to create their own A, B, and C, hash them, and then uh, together, the, because the hash is homomorphic, we're going to each add all of the uh, hashes together, make sure that we have the same result, and this will be the evaluation point that we're going to use. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, uh, what I was considering was not homomorphic hashing. I briefly mentioned it, but maybe uh, I spoke in my head uh, or thought too lovely. Uh, you could also use a tree hashing where uh, each where you hash together in a tree all of these uh, evaluation points to get uh, one. So there are different methods to do it. Uh, it depends on the, the application, the, mo the model you have in mind. Here we had a centralized supervisor, so this was the simplest. Uh, if you consider people uh, creating their own proofs, you can use a more thick hashing. You could use uh, tree-based hashing. I uh, think, for instance, Blake to uh, has a tree mode. So there are several ways to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, no. So do I think there is room for improvements on new stream that could come from a plank? especially mixing them with new advances in the field. Uh, yes, I think that there are. Uh, so one thing that is uh, very fashionable uh, nowadays is, uh, let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, uh, folding schemes. Folding schemes is actually very close to uh, aggregations accumulation. Uh, so what you're going to do in a folding scheme, and uh, for Planck, you have the paper, uh, Summary by by uh, Nicola Monblatt, uh, which does this, is uh, you're going to add to your equations a near term that you're going to accumulate over the proofs to prove that all of, all of the statements, all of the witnesses that you want to prove are correct. Here, what we're doing is we do not add uh, proofs together. Uh, we actually uh, use a specific commitment scheme to prove everything at once. So I would be quite interested to see if we could actually uh, share uh, share this result and do a mix of uh, standard accumulation and folding scheme. Uh, so for instance, uh, as I was saying uh, before, uh, the Z polynomial, for instance, uh, we proved that uh, we actually can match them together. The Z polynomial, you could match them together uh, to begin with. Uh, the proof of knowledge is very expensive if you want to do uh, to to hide the public inputs. Uh, so, would there be a way to actually use folding scheme just for this uh, big W part? Yeah, uh, that could be quite and not on this V and T because we don't need them. That would be quite interesting. Uh, in that case, we might have. Uh, a verification and a proof size, which is still uh, sublinear, 
but we might reduce the gap between proving uh, several uh, mini proofs and the meta verification that we have in the plan here. And likewise, we might be able to reduce the setup, uh, which is technically not a problem because you only need to do it once. Uh, but I'm quite interested in doing that. Uh, one thing that is uh, quite uh, interesting right now also are uh, lookup arguments. Uh, here we implemented um, lookup or uh, hello to lookups, which are quite similar. Uh, we also implemented uh, some uh, rather common uh, range queries. Uh, there are a few protocols now, uh, I'm thinking of uh, cache questions, which do very efficient lookups. Uh, uh, lookups. Uh, it would be interesting to see if there is a way to actually uh, measure two together. Uh, I think a few weeks ago, uh, perhaps even last week, uh, a paper was released which does uh, uh, plonk with cache questions. Um, it might be sub plonk or goblin plonk. Uh, I'm really sorry, there are 20 different plonk papers and it's a bit hard to, to remember which one is which sometimes. Uh, so it would be interesting to see if we could also uh, use our technique for aggregation on a QC version of plonk. What would be the interest of doing that? Proving here uh, is uh, in n log n because we are using KZG and uh, fast wave transforms. If we could not do fast wave transform, the proving time would be linear. So that would be much better. Uh, every lots of people are working now on a linear prover because this is one of the uh, biggest limitation of proving systems uh, stacks right now. So yeah, to, to, to sum up, uh, merging folding schemes and uh, accumulation could be quite interesting uh, because we do not need error attempts everywhere, depending on the proof system. Um, better lookups and a linear prover. Uh, it would be interesting to see what we can do. Uh, yeah, this depends on the proving commit. Uh, I think most uh, questions can be easily thought after uh, when considering print commit, uh, print email commitments, uh, because we need here um, homomorphic ones. So I need to check if QC actually relies on, uh, could use homomorphic ones. I'm not sure they can, uh, but I will check that. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, yeah, uh, so, I'm not sure if there is any question. Uh, while waiting, I guess I will wait a few minutes, uh, and then it might be over. Uh, what I can tell you, uh, just to, to show up a, a bit, is we have uh, implemented uh, a plonk uh, from scratch. So you have a plonk uh, implementing an OCaml with uh, bindings to codes to have a very efficient uh, proof and verification uh, checks, proof computations and verification checks. We have implemented it distributed on several calls or on several machines. We have an experiment uh, that, as I said, uh, was done on uh, Amazon instances. Uh, it is working. Uh, of course, I will not say we use it in production because there can always be uh, vulnerability or problem here or there, you have to be careful. Uh, this work is very interesting and could be uh, reused on top of Halo, which is uh, using Plonk, on, uh, which could be also implemented uh, in CFCOM uh, for different projects to be used. Uh, as you can see, the principles are nearly the same as NACPAC, so there's nothing uh, novel. There has been uh, just a smart engineering and optimizations here and there, uh, which uh, are worth uh, reading, I think. Uh, and yeah, to add one more thing, I talked a lot about Snapback, but there's actually uh, another paper uh, which created a general uh, uh, pairing, uh, uh, pair a general uh, IPA. Uh, which is very close to what we're doing and what Snackpack is doing. That uh, is worth uh, reading. Uh, I'm not sure I added it in here. No, uh, I will add it uh, in the slide before sending them. 
the, yeah, there is a lot of work uh, ongoing on uh, on um, polynomial commitment schemes uh, on aggregation, uh, which may be pure aggregation or folding scheme. It's it's very interesting and it's uh, a bit hard to to catch up sometimes. Thank you. Uh, I do not see any other questions. Thanks a lot.